a zipper tooth pattern on all the edges of your uh, unrolled formwork using uh, Grasshopper. So in Rhino with Rhino 6, uh, the plugin called Grasshopper is included by default. All you have to do is type in the word Grasshopper and it will open, looks something like this. Um, and Grasshopper is basically a visual interface uh, programming software uh, that allows us to use uh, most of the same tools that Rhino has built in it already. Um, so any command that you would use in Rhino, you can access as well in Grasshopper, but uh, fortunately for us, it also allows us to automate the use of, of those commands. Um, and in that case, uh, for example, like with adding uh, you know, a zipper tooth to each individual curve or edge of your pattern, um, that's going to make life a lot easier because we can easily tell um, we can easily tell Grasshopper to model uh, a pattern to all the edges at once rather than going one by one. And I'll, you'll see what I mean by that uh, as we go through it. But uh, in order to get ready for this, the first thing that we want to do is uh, make sure we have all our uh, cut patterns as curves. So you guys probably all have these surfaces. Um, like I explained in the last video, what you want to do is select all the surfaces and use the command dupe border. Again, that will duplicate uh, all the edges of the outline of the surface um, as individual curves. They're no longer a surface, they're a curve. Then you, what you want to do is go ahead and explode all of those curves. I'm going to change this onto a different layer for right now. Okay, so we should have all of the edges of that um, shape as independent curves. And you also want to be careful, any of these edges that were generated uh, by poly surfaces uh, will tend to explode into multiple curves. So in, in cases like that, you would have to go back, let's say for example, uh, I had, uh, you know, this thing was two independent curves, even though I know it's actually only one edge. I could just go back and join those two. Um, and that should produce the result that we need. Uh, so uh, once you have all those curves established, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this outline. Uh, because I don't need it. Go ahead and open Grasshopper. Now the way that Grasshopper works uh, is by using components. Uh, and components are like these little buttons basically and you can place them on the canvas and you can um, you know, input different information to them and they perform different functions. Uh, the most basic of these is uh, what's called a primitive. Uh, so if we go over to this tab that's the first one on the left, it's called parameters. Uh, and under this tab, we have uh, a category called geometry. And in geometry, we have a whole bunch of different types of geometry. Uh, now, whenever we want to uh, insert data into Grasshopper from Rhino, uh, which is also called a reference, uh, we want to grab a, a parameter geometry component, so just a generic primitive. All that means is we go to geometry, and because we want to input curves, we click on curves, and we place that component on the canvas. Now all components also have um, inputs and outputs, or at least an input. Um, so on the left hand side, if we hover over uh, this little um, button, just on the part of the um, component, you can see it's going to tell us some information about uh, what type of, of, of um, data this thing has in it. So if we look in the little text bob, bubble that pops up, it says contains a collection of generic curves. And the output's going to be the same. This thing is just kind of a container. Um, and the way that we would input the uh, curves is by going into Rhino and selecting them. I'm going to right click on the layer that I have all these outlines on, select objects. And I've selected all the curves. I could go back into Grasshopper and I would right click on this component and hit set multiple curves. Uh, so now if I select this component, first of all, you can see it's changed from yellow uh, to kind of light gray. Um, that's because this is now sort of doing something. This is working properly. Um, so yellow means that uh, your component isn't doing anything. It hasn't collected any information yet. Um, if I were to uh, Select it, you can see that the curves in my Rhino viewport turn green. 
And that's how we know um, what data is contained in which um, components in Grasshopper, because we have a live um, update in our Rhino viewport of what's going on in our Grasshopper script. Um, so all our curves are now input into Grasshopper from uh, uh, Rhino. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just show you a little bit more about data. So uh, again, we have a bunch of curves in uh, Grasshopper right now. If I go to parameters and under input, grab this little yellow pad with the squiggly line, it's called a panel. Panel is just a little um, uh, text box that will plug, uh, that will show us like what's, what information is, is coming out of where. Um, so what we can do, you know, in order to build a Grasshopper script, we basically drag wires from one thing to another. Um, so if I drag this guy over, you can see in this panel, that's all the curves that I have in my list. And you can see that they're individual curves, so they're exploded, right? There's however many, like 40 of them, 47, uh, and uh, they're all uh, organized in an order. So if we look on the left-hand side, this is what's called an index. So every um, item in our list uh, is assigned in, to a specific place in that list based on the index or the, or the number it is in the series. Um, and I'll explain why that's important later. But what I want to do next is I want to divide up all my curves uh, based on the kind of uh, pattern that I need to generate to uh, produce the zipper. Now, uh, based on the zipper uh, uh, proportions that were given to you that are on D2L, if we go ahead and measure the zipper pattern, first of all, if we look at the base of the zipper, we should be able to see that, okay, this is actually not super accurate, but uh, basically the spacing, let me just do this in a better way. If I use the command distance to give my, myself a really accurate reading, I can go from one point to one point on a gap. You can see the distance is 0.253. Now if I do the same thing on a tooth at the base, the distance is also 0.253. So at the curve, at the edge of the shape, we're dividing it uh, evenly into segments of 0.253. Uh, and then I'll explain how to do the tapered uh, tooth thing uh, when we get to that. But basically what I want to do is I want to divide each curve up into segments that are about 0.253 inches long. So when we want to divide a curve in um, Grasshopper, we could go over to the curve category at the top. And in here, under uh, the analysis category, we should find a component. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really remember where some of the buttons are, but we find a component called divide curve. I'm really blanking here. Uh, maybe it's under utility. Oh, it's under division, I'm stupid, all right. So go under curve, under division, and there should be a component in here that's just called divide curve. So not divide distance or divide length, just divide curve, all right. Now, uh, this is a different kind of component. So first of all, again, we can see that it's yellow. If we hover over the little air bubble, it should give us a message that tells us why it's yellow. It says input parameter C failed to collect data. So this thing isn't doing anything yet because it hasn't gotten enough information from us uh, to perform its function. Now, if we hover over all the inputs, you can again see that it's asking for different kinds of information here. So first of all, it's asking for a curve in the C input. In the N input, it's asking for a count. Uh, and you can see by the little icon that that means a number value. And in the K input, it's asking for a, a, what's actually called a Boolean value, which means a true or a false value. And by default, we can go ahead and leave that one alone. So some of the components will come with default values already input. For example, under count, we already have the number 10 input there. So if I go ahead and drag the output of my curves into the C input on my divide, you can see in our Rhino viewport, something has already changed. Now when I select the divide, 
you can see I have a whole series of points. This is how uh, Grasshopper shows points as little X's. If I select it again, they turn from red to green. Uh, and we should be able to see that we have, and if we look at the output here, we have actually 11 points per curve because it's been divided 10 times. Um, so we have um, 11 points for each segment of curve. Now, the first thing you'll obviously be able to tell right away is that this uh, doesn't work for every curve, right? Because they're all different lengths. So what we need to do is tell um, a Grasshopper how many times to divide each individual curve. Again, this is pretty easy. So the first thing we need to do is find a length. Uh, we need to figure out what the length of each one of these curves is. If we go under Curve, under Analysis, go down here to where it says Length. Again, this is a very simple component. If we hover over the input, it asks for a curve. Now, if we hover over the output, it's giving us a number value which represents the length uh, in inches or in whatever units our file is in. Um, so I could divide it by the number of, um, of its length. And what you would see, first of all, is that now the spacing has become completely even. But this is an arbitrary number, right? We actually want to divide it into 2.53. So the next thing we need to do is divide the length of the curve by 2.53, figure out how many times we need to divide it so that the individual segments are about 2.53 inches. Uh, it's okay if that doesn't make sense, but just follow me on this one. We're gonna go back to parameters, gonna to go to input, and we're gonna get a thing called a number slider. But most of the time in Grasshopper, when you wanna enter values that you can change to see what the results will be when you change those values, we're gonna use a thing called a number slider, we double click on a number slider, we can change the range, so the minimum and maximum value. We can change it from a number with decimal points, so any number of decimal points, to an integer, to only evens or only odds. And what we want is to enter a value of 2.53. So down here under numeric value, I can double click and just manually type in 0 0.253. Click on the little green check. Why didn't that work? 0.253. Huh. Okay. Oh. oh. I screwed up the range. I'm sorry. So we'll get a fresh one. So in here I can type in 0.253, hit the green check, and then it will be set to that number exactly. You can also on uh, on these number sliders you can click on them without having to enter the options, which is this darker gray part of the component. If I click on the number slider part, I can also change the value. Oops. Okay, and that's how we uh, would set a number. Um, so that's our distance, right? So if we take our curve and divide it by that distance, uh, it should give us the right number of subdivisions, which we need to do a little math to figure out. So then we'll go over to the math component. Under operators, we have all our kind of basic mathematical um, uh, operators uh, like addition, multiplication, uh, etc. We're going to go ahead and use divide. Up here under division, again, this is a very simple component, just accepts uh, input or numbers as input. It's going to ask for a number to divide, which is our length, and a number to divide it by, which is our uh, sub subdivision length. Okay, so now we're getting an output from this panel. And if I go ahead and plug that into my n on my divide, once again, you can see that um, we have more points now. Uh, they're closer together, but they're also pretty evenly spaced, right? And if I were to go into Rhino and just kind of uh, roughly try and trace between one of these points and another, we can verify, okay, 0.252. So it's pretty close to um, uh, the right distance between points. Now, um, we need to actually do a little bit of extra work here because, again, we need to ensure that um, uh, we have the right number of tooth on, uh, teeth on each segment, on each uh, edge. So as, as you were doing with the um, uh, kind of manual, uh, apl manually applying the zipper, we need to also ensure that like, the zipper always starts with a gap and always ends with a tooth. And what that means is we need an even number of subdivisions. Um, so if we look at the values we're getting at now, first of all, uh, they're um, decimals. We're having a whole lot of um, 
extra information that we don't need. In fact, the divide component is, is rounding those numbers for us uh, and giving us, like, for example, it would divide it into 12, divide it into 6, divide it into 6, etc. But you can also see that we're getting, uh, like for here, example, this would round to 3, right? And that's an odd number. So we need these all to divide into an even number. Again, that's pretty easy to do uh, with a little bit of math. So we'll go back to math. Uh, once again, I'm going to use a divide. I'm going to divide all these numbers by 2. Now, um, I should point out another way to get uh, components in Grasshopper is to just double click in the canvas somewhere. And you can start typing in, uh, you know, the name of the component you want. And it'll automatically search for that component um, based on your libraries and give you a set of components that you can uh, search for or you can use. So for example, I could pull down this number slider. Now there are a couple shortcuts that are possible with this search function. And one of them is that when we want to generate a number slider with a certain value, instead of searching for a number slider, we can just enter that value in the search bar. So if I enter the number two, you can see I'm automatically coming up with a number slider. And when I press enter, I've automatically created a number slider with the number two set to it. That's just a little shortcut. Now, if I plug that into my divide, um, so now I'm dividing each of these numbers in half. Um, what we want to do next would be to round them. So if I divide these numbers in half, round them, and then multiply them by two, um, what we'll find is that we'll get uh, uh, whole numbers that are always even, right? Um, I won't, you know, I mean, I'm sure you guys can discern why that is, but for now, all we need is to get a round component. Uh, I don't, also don't know where that is. I'm sure it's under math. Okay, so under utility, go to round. So again, this uh, component accepts one input. I'm going to use a uh, panel to illustrate what I'm doing here. You can see we have numbers with uh, decimal points. If I plug that into my round, now I have three inputs. One of them, and I'll hover over, is the integer nearest to x. So this is the number, um, just the nearest whole number uh, to each one of these numbers. So for example, here it would be 6, here it would be 3, right? If I go ahead and plug that in, you can see that those are the numbers we're getting. These other two will allow us to always round down or always round up. In this case, we don't need that. So we're just going to use the n output. Um, the next thing that I'll do, again, would be to multiply the number. I'm just going to double click on the canvas. The actual uh, symbol for multiplication is the star symbol, which is also shift 8 on most keyboards. Or you can go to math, operators, multiplication. OK. And I'm going to multiply the n outputs of the nearest integer by 2. Once again, I'm going to get a panel to show you what I'm doing. So uh, originally we had numbers like this. This was our original number list. And now I have numbers like this, right? So 12 has been rounded to 12 as an integer, but 3 has been rounded to 2. So because we divided it in half and then rounded it, uh, we, we're getting only even numbers here. So that's just a little trick to uh, get even numbers um, as our subdivision values. And now when I go ahead and plug in uh, this new number into my divide, I should be getting uh, you know, lists that only have an even number of divisions. Um, and uh, that will produce what we want, which is to have a gap at the beginning of every edge and a tooth at the end of every edge. Or whatever pattern we choose. Okay, so that's kind of the one of the trickier parts. Um, the next thing we want to do is begin to um, actually, I'm sorry. The next thing we want to do is produce the uh, top part of the zipper is up here now. Because we have uh, some of these edges are curved, uh, we can't simply accomplish this by moving points and connecting them because we would get like a weird, you know, kind of uh, low resolution version of this curve. What we actually need to do is offset these curves and then subdivide the offset curve. 
Uh, so this is um, also pretty simple to do. Just go under curve, under analysis, and go to offset. I don't know where it is. I'm just going to search for it. So if I double click on the canvas, type in offset. A couple ones, but I want this one offset curve. Okay. So this is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, this component asks us for a curve. That's our curve right there. The next input will be a distance. So D is offset distance. Again, it's asking for a number. It's also telling us, for example, if we look at the difference between the symbol on this input and the symbol on this input, you can see the divide is looking for an integer or a whole number, and the, the distance is not necessarily. So we can put any number in here, and it'll offset to that distance. Uh, now we've got to figure out what is that distance. So if we go back into Rhino and uh, measure from the base of our zipper to the top of our zipper, using the distance command, we see we have 0.15. So again, I'm going to make a number slider, double click on the canvas, type in 0 0.15, press enter, and that's our distance. Um, and now if we go back, you can see we're also um, offsetting each curve by uh, about the right distance. So I left this zipper in place so we can kind of verify whether we're, it's doing what we want it to. So it's offsetting to right, just the right distance. So um, that's an important step. But now we also need to uh, divide this new curve, the offset curve. So I can do that pretty easily. And I want to divide it by the same number of uh, divisions as I did my base curve. So all I got to do is actually make a copy of this divide component. There's a couple of ways to copy things in Grasshopper. You can select a component and hit Control C, Control V. It'll duplicate it. You can also drag and tap Alt like you would in, in Rhino, actually. And it'll duplicate the component. So again, we want to use the same number of division values, or the same number of divisions. Uh, and we want to use this new offset curve. So in order to replace the uh, current one that's plugged in, I'm just dragging uh, from this component and dragging it in. So you can see it already re it replaced that wire that was plugged into it previously. But you can also see in Grasshopper, or I'm sorry, if we look in Rhino window, in the Rhino viewport, you can see that we've, we've generated something of a mess. And if we look at each curve, uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, points on them, and they're not evenly spaced. So something's going wrong. Now, um, this is a common issue in Grasshopper. Uh, but there are many different ways to structure a list. So as I explained at the beginning, there are lists that have basically one level of hierarchy. So this is everything's in one list, and they're organized from beginning to end. Now, if I were to look at the output from this list, uh, it looks very different, right? So what we have here is actually, rather than having um, everything in one list, what we're looking at is every item is in its own list by itself. So this uh, value in the top right corner represents something called a branch. Uh, a branch is basically like a sublist. So this is a bunch of lists within a list. Uh, it's just a way to kind of organize data hierarchically so that we can, uh, you know, kind of do more, um, uh, do more with the data. Um, and uh, you can see that within each list, there's only one item, and it's at index zero. So it's the only item. It's the first item, etc. And when we plug two different kinds of lists into the same component, like we just did there, so you can also tell when a list is. Uh, so this is called grafted. That means that there's a bunch of sublists within a list. Um, you can tell when, a, when data is grafted because it will give us a dashed line, a dashed wire, rather than a solid line or a solid wire. Um, so what we need is for either this data to become grafted, so this data to be in separate lists, or we need this data to become what's called flattened, which means we need it all in one list. Um, I believe, because of what we're going to do later, it's actually better if we have it so that every curve is in its own little list. Uh, because uh, once we go and subdivide these curves, what you'll see is um, now we have, like for example, 12 points per curve. 
we want to keep those in kind of their own list for each curve. So what I'm going to do is actually go all the way back to the beginning. It doesn't matter if you understand this or not, but uh, just know that there is uh, grafted data and there's flattened data in Grasshopper. And it's a problem when you try and mix them. So what I'm going to do is go all the way back to the beginning. Again, if I look at this original list where I input all my curves, you can see every curve is um, in one list together. And we can change that by right-clicking on this component, and we can choose the option Graft. Right-clicking on the output, actually. Uh, and now you can see that um, this list looks a whole lot like the one coming out of our offset. Each individual curve is in its own uh, sublist. Okay, and you can see that also solved our problem of having a bunch of random points on each curve. Um, okay, so uh, now we're in pretty good shape uh, in terms of subdividing our curves, in terms of making the depth of the zipper. What we need to do next is actually create the pattern of the zipper. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, when I divide a curve, I'm actually just getting a bunch of points, right? This output is giving me uh, individual like x, y, z coordinate points uh, somewhere in our workspace, in our model space. What I need instead is I need for this curve, these, both of these curves actually, to be split uh, at each one of these points. Um, so if I go to curve and go to utility, there should be a component that's called shatter. Oh, it's probably under division, under division, under shatter. The shatter does exactly what I just described. It takes a curve and it uh, splits it at a bunch of uh, what's called a um, parameter. So if I plug in uh, my curves into this component, you can see it's still giving us an error. It's asking for input parameter t failed to collect data. So this is kind of a really important concept in Grasshopper as well. And I'm actually going to model, I'm going to make a separate uh, script really quick to demonstrate this. So I'm going to, you guys don't need to do this part, but just to, uh, illustrate what I'm talking about here. I'm going to shatter this straight line that I just made. Uh, so what this component does is it uh, takes a curve and it gives us some information based on what's called a parameter. Now all types of geometry actually have their own parameter space. What that means is uh, with a curve, for example, we can find any point along this curve by telling it, you know, okay, we want to go to 75% of the length of this curve. For example, if I get a number slider and type in, I'm just going to type in like 10.0 for right now, and I'll plug this into my T. Okay. Now, as I move my number slider around, you can see uh, that based on what the parameter is that I'm telling Grasshopper to look for, it's generating a different, a point in a different location relative to our curve. Now, surfaces also have what's called a parameter space, except that they're 2D rather than 1D like a curve is, because a curve only has start and end and a, and a direction or a path. Um, a surface has two directions, right? Like a coordinate space, X and Y. Uh, we're not going to get into that now, but uh, what we also want is to understand how uh, these work. So with curves, a parameter uh, depends on the length of the curve. If I go into uh, Rhino and search for the length of this curve, it tells me 5.515. So if I were to make a number slider that said 5.515 in uh, Grasshopper and plug that in, you can see that it generated a point right at the end of our curve. Um, so that is, uh, right now, uh, has a parameter space that's determined by the length of the curve. Now, um, let's say we don't need to know uh, information based on the length of the curve. What we just want is the midpoint, for example, or the, or the two-thirds point, or the three-quarter point, or something like that. We have the option in Grasshopper to, um, uh, to do something called reparameterize. And all that that means is if I hover over the C input and right click and choose this button, reparameterize, now you can see it stopped showing our point, right? I'm going to make a new number slider that goes from 0 to 1. 0 to 1. 
So anytime we reparameterize a curve, we've reset the parameter space of that curve to, to be between zero at one end and one at the other, which is great because now we can easily find the ends of the curve, we can easily find 50% along the curve or 20% along the curve, etc. So hopefully that all makes sense. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that um, information uh, to tell Grasshopper where to shatter or where to split uh, these curves based on these points. Now, when we divide a curve, uh, Grasshopper gives us points, but if we look at the little t output, it's also giving us the parameter values of where those points are along our curve. And in order to shatter something, um, that's exactly what we need. We need the parameter value. So rather than plugging the points into the parameter value, I'm going to plug the parameter value in. Okay, now we, have, we should have gone from a list that has a single curve in each branch or in each sublist to a list that has a whole bunch of curves in each sublist because this whole line has been split up at each one of those points. Okay, I'm going to delete all this stuff right now. I'm also going to make a copy of this. So again, I want to shatter my base curve as well based on the uh, subdivision, or I'm sorry, the parameters of the subdivision. Okay. So now we have, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I should point that out too. So in Grasshopper, any component has what's called a preview. Uh, now if I select this component, you can see we're looking at our offset curve. Now because it's light gray, that means that the preview uh, setting is on. So we are looking at, at this um, curve in the, in the uh, Rhino viewport. Uh, whether it's selected or not, it's, it's visible. So in order to uh, turn stuff off, so for example, when we, when we shattered that curve, we also kind of duplicated that curve, right? So this is a whole different set of information. But if I were to unpreview, so select this component, right click on it, and check preview, you can see it's been turned to dark gray, which means it's not previewed. But when I go and select my shatter, it's still there, right? So the, the information is essentially duplicated in the inside of this component. Um, and because we have now this kind of new information, uh, we want to be able to see what we're doing. So we can go ahead and select all the stuff that we're not previewing anymore, including the original curve. So just drag and select like you would in Rhino. Right click anywhere on the canvas and hit preview off. Okay, so now we just have those two shattered uh, curves showing up in our uh, Rhino viewport. The next step will be to um, uh, pull out uh, the right ones that we want. Um, so like with the zipper pattern, we have a gap and then a tooth, which means that even though we shattered this into individual segments, we actually only want every other segment. Uh, this is uh, a kind of data sorting problem. So if I go up here, there's another category called sets. Sets is like all kinds of information that allow us to generate and sort data. And under sequence, there's a whole series of components called cull. A cull means just to remove something. So for example, if I use the uh, component cull pattern, uh, it asks for two inputs. So one of them is our list or the data. It can be any type of geometry or information. And then the other one is, is a culling pattern. And you can see by default it has a set of Boolean values already set uh, in the um, input here. Now if I go to back to parameters and get a number, um, or I'm sorry, a panel, what I want to do is enter uh, my own set of um, Boolean values to tell it which ones of these um, shattered curves I want and which ones I don't. Um, so I'm going to get this panel, double click on it, and because it's not plugged into anything or nothing's plugged into it, uh, we can just type in information. So I'm going to type in true, then I'll press enter to go to the next line and I'll type in false. And when I'm done, I can just click anywhere on the canvas. So now we have uh, you know, this panel with some information in it. Well, the other thing I want to do, so right now this is just uh, information, but it's not formatted, formatted into a list. 
So I'll select my panel, right click, and hit multi line data. And now you can see it, it is formatted, formatted into a list. So these two values are in a different, um, at a different index. And that's important. So when we go ahead and plug this one into our P or our calling values, now it's, it's going true false. Uh, because the length of our pattern is just, is just two, right? So we don't want a curve, and then we do want one, and then we don't, we do. It's just going to repeat that pattern until it gets to the end of the list. So it's just going to sort the whole list and say we want every other value. And if we look at, uh, so now if I were to unpreview the shatter component, which has all of the um, uh, uh, subdivided curve in it, so preview off. You can see it's just giving us every other subdivided curve. Now I want to do exactly the same thing for the base curve, except I want the opposite set of values, right? With the base curve, I just want the ones in between the zipper tooth. I'm going to select both of these components. Control C, Control V. I'll plug the shatter into the list from our base curve. And in order to get the opposite set, so not the ones that line up, but the ones between, I need to tell it to uh, sort false true. So I'll just double click on this component and I'll type in false, enter, true. And click OK. OK. And so now you can see it's giving us the opposite set. Um, and if I uncheck, if I unpreview my shatter, uh, it should be working um, for every single component. Oh, you can't see it because we turn off this layer. There we go. So it's giving us the basic um, parts of our zipper. Now, uh, so first of all, this is why we offset it right here, because it's giving us a subdivided version of that curve, rather than, again, straight segments in between those points, which would screw up our geometry. Um, the other point I want to make is, well, I'll do this later, actually, never mind. Um, so now we have the problem of, first of all, uh, we need to um, make sure so like with our normal zipper, uh, we don't have the um, geometry just go up and over and down. We have a little bit of a kind of taper. The edges of the tooth at the top are, are, are spread out just a little bit uh, to give us that kind of locking that we need in order for the geometry to come together with the kind of zipper. Um, uh, so what I need to do is actually take all of the uh, segments that are at the outside of the geometry and I need to extend them a little bit to form this taper. This is really easy. Again, like the one way you could do this in Grass or in Rhino would be to use the command extend. And of course, the same command exists as a component in Grasshopper. If we go to curve and go to utility and go to extend curve, I'll place that one on the canvas. Uh, you can see it says failed to collect data. So I'm going to plug in those uh, segments, the offset segments, into C. So those are the curves that I want to extend. The next thing it asks for is an extension length. So L0 means the length at the start, and L1 means the length at the end. Now if we go back over to our um, zipper pattern, and we measure, so let me draw a new line. This is what it would look like if we just drew it uh, between a non-tapered edge. So I want to know the distance between what would normally be the unoffset segment and its tapered edge. So this thing is tapered out by 0.02 inches. What I need to do in Grasshopper is make a um, slider 0 0.02 and press Enter. And I would plug that into L0 and L1. And then if we go back to Grasshopper, you can see our offset curves have been extended by that distance. OK, so now those are the new uh, segments that we want to build our zipper with. The last and final step will be to connect the offset segments and the base segments. Um, in order to do that, uh, we need to, again, uh, figure out uh, where the points are. So uh, in uh, our extend uh, command, or I'm sorry, not an extend, in the curve um, category under ability, uh, 
or maybe under analysis. There's a, com there's a component called endpoints. Pretty easy. Again, this will just return. We plug our curves into it. You can see it's giving us a point at the start of each curve and a point at the end of each curve. So that's two points. And I would copy the same thing uh, for the other side. Now, one thing that's going to be a little bit weird here, you, you may have already noticed, is like uh, this curve, for example, and our base we actually have one extra point than we have uh, at our um, offset. So what we need, actually to make this a lot easier, is we need to know what are the curve segments that are actually at um, the same uh, position uh, relative to um, the offset segments. Um, in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to where we um, sorted out we want every other segment, and I'm going to make a copy of our offset segments. I'll select the cull pattern in the panel, copy, paste. And this time I'll plug it into my base curve segments, but I don't want to change my, um, my Boolean value. And if I preview this component on, you can see that it's giving us the same segments right below where the offset segments are. So rather than using uh, the ones in between and trying to sort out, sort out what order those points need to be in, I'm just going to use the same uh, segments uh, on the base, baseline. I'm actually going to plug this component into my start and end. And then the rest is really quite easy. So we go back to a curve. Uh, this time we want to use the primitive. And we're going to choose this one called line that just looks like a line with two points. This, all this needs is a point at the beginning of the line and a point at the end of the line. So if I plug the start value of my offset curve into A, start value of my base curve into B, you can see I've generated a line between the start value of those two. Then I would copy this component. Then I would plug in the end points. Again, if I just drag and place, it'll replace the um, data that's currently been uh, entered into that input. Okay, I would unpreview this. And just like that, we have a continuous zipper of um, a certain length. Now, the very last thing you would need to do here uh, would be to um, uh, basically double check that. Uh, and this time you need to kind of do it manually. I'm trying to find one where like, you know, the, the tooth doesn't line up with the zipper. Automatically got them all right. Kind of interesting. Um, but uh, just to point this out, um, so if I turn the base curves back on, again, uh, Grasshopper is actually referencing these curves, so I wouldn't want to delete them. If I deleted this curve, for example, Again, that zipper goes away because now Grasshopper doesn't have a baseline to uh, develop all this information from. Um, I also just want to point out that curves in Rhino by default have a direction. That's why they have one side is the start and the other side is the end. And we need to know what that direction is. If I use the command dir, you can see in the viewport a bunch of arrows have popped up and are uh, indicating that the curve is moving one way. Or another. Now, if I select all the, rather not those, but all the outlines and type DIR, you can see because we kind of um, develop these from surfaces that are all facing up, that are all, uh, you know, we kind of modeled the same way, all of our curves should, moving, should be moving in one direction, same direction around the, around the perimeter. If I were to select one of these, so I just click on it. And you can see right now the arrows got reversed. If I press enter, you can see our zipper flip to the other side. That's really all you got to pay attention to is um, if you have a zipper on the wrong side, I need to just click that line and it'll flip. The other thing I wanted to point out here is um, so these edges where we have a really um, short uh, edge connecting the two, because the nearest uh, value to you know, 0.253 in length was only one subdivision. Uh, we only have one tooth here, which means that edge is not really going to hold together. So as I explained with your um, 
you're doing, doing the zippers manually, what you want is at least two teeth, uh, or two kind of popped out parts per edge. So if I go back over in my script to where I'm generating the subdivision values, so that's our N, I could add a little um, uh, kind of check in between where the subdivision values are and the subdivided curves are, and tell it, okay, make sure that there's at least, you know, two teeth, or in other words, make sure that each curve is divided into at least four segments. So what I could do here is, and I would go to math, I believe, And I honestly don't know where this one will be. So just double click on the canvas and type in max, M-A-X, maximum. Um, so if I place that guy on the canvas, again, if we look at the inputs, it'll ask for two numbers or two items. And if we look at the output, it'll say the greater of A and B. So if we were to sort through this whole list, and I don't know if we'll be able to find it, but okay, so uh, list number four has two subdivisions in it. I plug this list into A, and then I get a number slider that's set to 4 into B. It's going to go through the whole list and say, okay, is 12 bigger than 4? It is, so keep 12. Is 6 bigger than 4? It is, so keep 6. And when it gets to this 2, it'll say, is 2 bigger than 4? It isn't, so use 4. So for example, when we replace this list with our other list, it'll, it'll replace that 2 with a 4. So it's kind of removing all the minimum values and replacing them with a larger value. Now when I plug that maximum into those two uh, divides, we can see that that short edge uh, suddenly got two teeth rather than uh, just one. <clears throat> okay, and the very last thing we need to do is actually put all these uh, curves together. As you can see, they're all individual separate uh, entities at the moment. Um, so although we're making the right geometry, if we were to, if we were to input this uh, stuff back into Rhino now, it would kind of be a mess. We'd have a whole bunch of different uh, individual segments. That's easy to do. We just use the command join or the component join. Uh, under curve, utility, join curves. <clears throat> now, this is kind of important. We want to actually plug a bunch of stuff into the same component now. It's asking us uh, curves to join. So we want to plug in all of our uh, connector lines and all of our segmented lines into the same guy. So in order to do that, as I plug them in, instead of replacing them, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. And you can see my little cursor changed to a green arrow. And that's allowing me to plug multiple things into the same input. And I can also disconnect certain things by holding control and dragging them back uh, from where they came. So shift and control are like add and remove. Um, okay. And uh, now we should have, uh, should have joined those together, but you can see if we hover over the output, uh, we still have this kind of crazy um, data structure where like a lot of stuff is in different lists. So like a lot of stuff didn't join, it's still in independent curves. A lot of stuff is still like a single curve in a list alone. And the reason for that is, um, you can see our data is all in separate lists now. And if we look at the number of branches we have uh, for each sublist, so this one has four. Um, and then we compare that to some of the other ones. For example, that one has four too, but this one has three. So basically, this join component doesn't know which curves we want to join to which. In this case, we actually want to just join everything. Uh, so it's really pretty simple. We just want to flatten the data again. I'm going to right click on the C input, hit flatten. Now, not much has changed except for that when we look at the output, we actually only have nine curves. So we have one for each one of these shapes. It's already been joined um, into one closed outline. It says closed planar curve. The very last thing we got to do once we have all this together is I'm going to preview everything else well. Select that component and we want to put it back into Rhino. So first of all, uh, I want to make a new layer for that because I don't want it to be on the same layer as any existing information. So I'll make a new layer, set it to current. And 
There's a couple ways you can do this. You can select like a bunch of stuff and right click on the canvas. And we want to choose this option bake. Because we're just baking one component at a time, we're just going to click on that individual component, right click and hit bake. We can actually choose which layer we want it to be assigned to. Uh, so I'll assign it to that new layer and click OK. Now if I were to close Grasshopper, you can see that these lines are now um, actually uh, Rhino geometry again. They're individual curves. And so just like that, we have a definition that has been uh, used to make our zippers. And what's great about that is um, we can use this now every single time we want to make a new formwork. We just have to input the curves uh, for the 2D um, shapes and it will automatically spit out um, a zipper, zipper pattern. All right, and uh, I think that's it for this one, so I will sign off.